the devil and all of his demons, baby, they want you dead. And we have done a very poor job. And I say we, I, I want to say the church, but I'm just going to say we collectively as a people, okay? We've done a pretty bad job of, um, you know, we want to take, we want to take the evil out of the day to day until something that's like noticeably evil happens right like some sort of shooting or something of the sort like that we want to take the evil out of the day and a lot of times you don't realize how many times you fall during a day and how many times you fall during a week how many how many assignments that you were supposed to go on how many battles you were actually supposed to fight and win but you fail but the enemy caused you to fall and you know just saying things like oh stay positive saying things like um you know it's gonna be your turn just keep working harder i want to tell you that working harder won't get you out of everything staying positive won't get you out of everything sometimes there are legitimate things that need to be broken off of your life so that you can be set free and go in the direction that you are sent. and i will even go off to say that you need to know you need to know what um ungodly resistance looks like because i know that there is a godly resistance sometimes you'll want to do something god's like that's not it baby okay that's not it yeah, I'm going to give you a little pushback on it. And sometimes it's something that you know that you're supposed to be doing and you can't do it. Sometimes you'll get to something, you'll get to a place that you know that you were supposed to be. And, and it never seems to work out. You're in relationships and they never seem to work out. You have five marriages. They never seem to work out. Jobs, it never seems to work out. You never got no money. You just never, you're always on the losing end. I'm going to tell you that that's a bit of ungodly resistance, demonic resistance even. That if you don't call it what it is, you'll never be able to get the tools necessary out of your belt to really be able to deal with some things. I'll tell you this, that I have a pretty, I have somewhere to go this morning, right? And I haven't had somewhere to go outside of my house in a long time. Yesterday, I had, you know, a good time yesterday. Girl, tell me why I couldn't go to sleep last night. I woke up at like 11 o'clock and I stayed up until about 3, knowing I had to get up early this morning. It's morning time right now. And I'm like, see, this ain't nothing but the enemy. But you know what I did? I took my time. I went in my prayer closet. I prayed. I read my word. So there are some things that you need to do. You need to you need to know when. Girl, I just missed the train. Thank you, Jesus. You need to know when the resistance that you're feeling towards your, you know, you're moving and you're getting resistance. You need to know when it's not right. You need to know when it's not right. And I will urge you to gather the tools necessary so that when you get that feeling that this resistance right here is not right you know how to break down walls you know how to um you know how to destroy mountains okay because the people are my people my people perish my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge they lack knowledge. They don't have the information necessary so that they can be successful. They don't have the information necessary so they can acquire or cure the success that they want. That that I say is theirs. I'm not going to say that you want because sometimes we be wanting some crazy stuff that is nowhere in the will of God for our lives. And yes, you will experience resistance. Or sometimes you simply get it. And you're just so far away from what God had in mind for your life. So I say all that to say, the enemy does not want you, sometimes he can't kill you, okay? Depending on how you, how foul you live in your life, sometimes he simply can't take you out. But he will, spiritually dead will suffice him. For you to be far away from the purpose that God intended you to live out will suffice for him. Because he knows that you'll never find fulfillment outside of God's intended purpose for you. So you'll start doing stuff. you start living in a way that destroys you. You don't have to do too much work once you get outside of purpose. You will take care of all of that. And I want to tell you that as you move forward in life and you experience resistance, or let's say you're in a good season, maybe take good seasons to learn new skills, how to war, 
okay take good season take good time to learn how to pray more to learn how to fast these are the tools prayer and fasting is your biggest it is your best weapons against the enemy let me tell you that i laid in the bed and i said you know what i haven't been there. i don't know when the last time i've been this time this ain't nothing but the devil. That's what I tell myself. This ain't nothing but the devil. Okay? This is straight up foolishness. This is straight up foolishness. And I said, okay, Tansy, I look at the, the clock and the clock, you know, it was like, let's say it was 7 o'clock. And I believe it actually was 7 o'clock. I said, by 7.20, Tansy, you're getting up out of this bed. When 7.20 came, I even got up before 7.20, but I told myself, when 7.20 comes, you're getting up out of this bed. Don't you know, as soon as I got out of the bed, the, the tired, the tension that I was sitting in on the bed, wondering if I should get up and go and do this, wondering if this is right, disappear. You know why? Because the enemy doesn't like to see you moving. You moving towards the purpose is dangerous. You moving toward the assignment, you moving toward the dream is dangerous because he knows that if you keep getting up, eventually you're going to figure this thing out. He don't want you to get up. Spiritually dead will suffice. I'm going to just be a YouTuber and make money on YouTube and sell out for the algorithms so I don't have to get up and go on the real assignment that God told me to do. Spiritually dead will suffice. And I want to tell you that if you're struggling, if you're struggling to get up out of the bed, the one thing that you can do is get up out of the bed. The one thing that you can do is get up out of the bed. I told you guys, it was like a while ago. At this point, I think it's like four years ago. Um, I was suffering from what I thought was just anxiety. That's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Um, anxiety is fear. And fear is one of the enemy's biggest and best tactics to keep you away from your assignment. If he can scare you, he can have you. You can spend a lifetime tied up in fear. So what I didn't understand was this thing that I was calling anxiety was actually... Um, one of the enemy's um, tethers to my soul to keep me in a place of non-progress. And some of you guys are struggling with anxiety, you're struggling with depression, and you're calling it anxiety and depression instead of calling it by its real name. An assignment sent straight from hell. And I will tell you that, like I said, when I was in that period of time when I was calling this thing anxiety, I had all the different, you know, workbooks and all these kind of things. And they provided a temporary relief to um, some of the real issues that I was that I was facing and helped me bring a few things to the surface. But none of it actually solved my problem. You know what solved my problem? Consecration and fasting and praying. That's what solved my problem. But I remember during that time that there would be some days I'm like, I don't even want to get up. I don't even want to get up out of my bed and go to the couch. And I remember one day, it was the day after I came back from um, the doctor's office. After she prescribed me some anxiety medication that I did not take. Because the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go in the bathroom and I want you to mark on your calendar. I want you to put a red dot on this calendar. And this is the day that your life will change. And I never took that medicine. And when I woke up the next morning, I saw my life begin to change. But there were some real things that I had to do. Every time I felt like I can't get out of this bed, I would get out of the bed. And I would go to the couch. So I made my way from the bed in the room to the couch. And after I made my way to the couch a few days, I said, okay, I'm going to put on some clothes and then I'm going to sit on the couch. Now, what I'm going to tell you, what no one told me, what I didn't get at that time is while I was in the bed, I should have been listening to worship music. I should have been worshiping. Even if that's not listening to the music, I could have been making the music myself. Making the worship music out of the, the thoughts that were playing in my head, I should have been making worship music to God, singing the praises to the Lord. That these things 
what I'm thinking about don't actually exist in my life right now. Father, I thank you. I know I'm feeling anxious about this thing right now, but it doesn't exist in my life right now. Father, I thank you. I know I'm thinking about the bills and how they're going to get paid, but right now I'm sitting with a roof over my head. Father, I thank you. And I want you to, that's how you began. Like I said, I didn't know that. That's, that is the, that's the place right there that you start. That's how you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Say thank you for the things that you already have. And stop letting anxiety tell you that you are missing out on something. That's how you begin. So I wish I would have known that. But I know it now and I'm telling it to you. And then as I move along, you know what I would have begin to do? Read the word. And some of you, like I said, you haven't ever studied the Bible. So you don't know that it's really, it's really, it's, it's good stuff, okay? Go in the, I mean, we have digital stuff now. We don't even have to do, you don't even have to do too much work. Type in fear in the Bible app and read the scriptures and read the stories about fear. And if you're really having a hard time, get yourself some books that make references to scripture. I would definitely stay away from books, especially when you're first starting out on this journey, that don't make references to scripture because then you can't go back and check it for yourself. We're not leaning on other people to grow us spiritually. We, you can't. That's like that's like saying to someone, "Hey, you work on my marriage." Saying to another woman, "Hey, you work on my marriage for me," and let me know when you did everything, and then I'll go in and I'll talk to him. Well, I'm not the one who developed the relationship. You need to begin your relationship with Jesus is a marriage. He's coming back for a bride. Okay, and some of y'all don't even know, him. and he don't want you at his wedding. You don't know. Him. Get away from here. I never knew you. I never knew you. Imagine showing up at a wedding with a man, like in real life, that you never even knew. He's coming back for a bride. So like I said, you develop the relationship. Learn how to talk. Just talk to him, just like I'm talking to you. And anxiety won't stand a chance. You talk your way out of that bed. You relate. You and your relationship with God, you relate your way right out of that bed. You relate your way into a new opportunity. You relate your way through the trials and the tribulations that life throws at you. You relate your way through it. Every time something happens, you back in the bed. Every time, every time something doesn't go the way that you plan, you're back where you started. At some point, you have to realize, no, it's not, I don't have bad luck. It's not a bad day. It's not a bad season. This is straight up sent from hell. And I'm going to tell you what I know, that as long as you don't serve the enemy his eviction notice, he, won't, he ain't going to evict himself. As long as you don't accept what the blood of Jesus did for you on the cross... You think the enemy is going to tell you, hey, remember what, what Jesus did on the cross for you. Remember how you really don't have to be bound like you bound right now. You think he's going to tell you that? No, he's not. So walking around even with the banner of Christianity, <laughs> baby, it's still bound? It's a problem. It's a real big problem. It's a problem to be a Christian with no power. It's a problem. A follower of Christ, should I say. Because like I said, a lot of people are walking around with the banner of a Christian and don't even know Christ. you like the woman at the well. Jesus like, dude, you talking about, you're talking about Jesus. You're talking about a Messiah and you're sitting right here in front of the Messiah. You're waiting for someone who has come, who has come right in your face. You, you people serve a God you don't even know. You do all that work serving a God you don't even know. No relationship. And it won't do in this season. It will not do. The enemy has gotten so strategic. He's so strategic with his strategies to keep you bound. And if you don't, if you don't know, you just keep 
taking the blows and not realizing maybe this is a fixed fight and this is your ring if God you're doing the thing that God told you to do this your ring this fight is fixed you got this thing in the bag and you in the bed why would somebody tell you that you want to fight why would somebody pay you why would somebody give you your portion you in the bed you're in the bed you didn't show up to court and y'all know what I said the the spirit is like a courtroom and I don't know much about law I know the things that I know about law is because of the laws that I've learned in the spirit but it's like a courtroom and you have someone accusing you girl try I mean know all your family history know all your family history know all your history been studying it since humanity began okay knows all your weaknesses because you run your mouth all the time so stuff he shouldn't know he know that too and it's digging up stuff looking for stuff day and night to just catch you on got you on all kind of charges and the only thing that you have to do is apply what Jesus did on the cross the blood of Jesus to that thing that you're being accused of and you're set free but you don't have relationship you don't know Jesus you don't have relationship with him so you don't understand what he did on the cross and therefore you're not set free it's that simple but the enemy doesn't want you to think it's that simple he wants you to keep on with your crystals and your cards and your positive energy and still bound and still looking to visit the therapist and still looking to visit the psychiatrist so they can prescribe you God knows what stuff they wouldn't even take themselves or might be taking themselves because they're out of their mind enough to sit there and, and make you feel like it's going to work trying to medicate demons won't happen it won't happen it will not happen and I'm just I'm telling you that it's real simple that's all I came to tell you this morning the enemy wants you dead or spiritually dead will suffice but it's real simple all you have to do is accept Jesus and apply what he did on the cross to your life every single day and some people think well I did it once I don't have to keep doing it well your accuser gonna keep accusing you Cause you're gonna keep doing stuff we're human beings baby we do stuff every single day every single moment you think about how many times you girl you've seen in a day you wouldn't even let that foolishness leave out of your mouth you wouldn't even say that because i want to encourage you i want to encourage you that it's that easy but i also want to be very real with you and saying like let's call this what it is okay let's call this what it is and I'm telling you because I'm walking in the freedom of it. I wish I would have called it what it is sooner instead of labeling it as anxiety. Baby, hey, those demons are laughing. They're they're laughing. They're like, ka, ka, ka. She never going to get out of this. And yes, let her go to the doctor so they can prescribe her another medicine. So they can prescribe her medicine so I can get her even deeper into the web. Because now she's out of her mind. Now she's not walking around sober minded. She want, you want marriage? It's real, it's real simple though. I have for you guys, go check out the website. Look up the discipleship tab. I, um, I made all that, some stuff on there is free. I'm not going above $2. I made up my mind. I know I said it was $5 before and I had some of the little short stories that were a bit more expensive. I wanna make it affordable. I'm not trying to get rich. I really want, the only reason I have a price on it is because I want some of you guys to be held accountable. Like you spend money on everything else. You spend more than $2 on the, in the drive-thru. Surely you could spend two dollars on something that would change your life. And over that, I remember I went to a conference. The Holy Spirit brought this to my attention when I was fixing some things for the website this weekend. Um, I went to a conference and I didn't have much money for the conference. But I looked at a thing and it said two dollars. And I'm like, surely this is a scam. But if it's if it is a scam, it's just two dollars. If it's not a scam, I'm about to go. And when 
I tell you it changed my life, told, changed my entire perspective. Changed my entire perspective. And I absolutely coupled that with fasting and coupled that with praying. In a conference, which is information, changed my life. And some of you simply just need some life-changing information. So go check out the website, like I said, and not just me. Do yourself like go. You go on Amazon shop for everything else. Imagine buying a purse, girl, and and sold just sold just all over the place. A sound mind and a body to follow suit is the name of this portion of the website because that's really what we want. We want a sound mind and a body that follows the mind. Okay, I don't want my body. I don't want my mind following my body because sometimes my body be jacked up. I want a sound mind, a mind that's capable of making good and sound decisions and a body that follows that. Okay, so as always, if you have a question, 